So on this week's episode, it's time to say goodbye to Azure AD. <laughs> I'm going to miss it. But hello to Entra ID. Hmm, what does it all mean for you? Stay tuned and you'll find out. You know, a number of years ago, Microsoft's Steve Barmer, do you remember him? Uh, developers, developers, developers. Uh, he came up with the name of Azure Active Directory. And after Active Directory, we all thought, kind of, yeah, okay, that's uh, uh, sometimes a little bit confusing. And to be fair, it has been for quite a number of years. So now what Microsoft have been doing over the last few years is they've been doing major rebrands. So their security products, of course, now come under the Microsoft Defender brand their compliance products come under Microsoft Purview and now their identity products of course all come under Microsoft Entra. Now on this week's episode I would thought I would just take a very brief look at what are the some of the main announcements that Microsoft have just made in terms of Microsoft Entra and more importantly what does it mean for you and your wallet. So are there going to be any price changes? Does it make any difference to the licenses? And ultimately, of course, what are some of the new features? Now, bearing in mind that this session is just a very brief kind of overview, I am going to focus on some of the new features in dedicated sessions uh, which are coming up. So definitely stay tuned for that. Now, um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then of course, I would love to have you on board. So please pop the subscribe button uh, and come and join. Uh, my learning community and if you have got any questions or comments or even feedback I would love to get that so just pop that down below and if you enjoy the session please just bump the like button it does make a difference to my channel all right so I think without any further ado let's jump in and let's have a chat about some of these announcements enjoy so the first big change, of course, is the name change. Azure Active Directory is now becoming Microsoft Entra ID. So Azure Active Directory will be phased out uh, in the next few uh, weeks and months. And so you'll see all the documentation to now represent Microsoft Entra ID. This includes all the exams. Now, in terms of licensing and costs, um, Azure Active Directory, the free version, will become Entra ID for free. Azure AD P1 will stay the same, so Entra ID P1. This is, of course, included with Microsoft's E3 plan. Um, if you have got an E5 subscription, then the P2 plan, of course, will become and be renamed as Microsoft Entra ID P2. Um, in terms of functionality, um, the E3 version and the free version, generally, they stay the same. So again, there's no price increases, nothing really changes. Um, with the P2 version, there are a number of of uh, improvements, um, a, a number of name changes and a number of improvements, a, a few of which uh, I'll show you in a moment. So let's take a quick look at Entra ID just in the portal and look at some of these changes. Okay, so let's take a quick look then at some of these new features. So I'm coming into the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So the first change that you'll notice is in the various admin centers. So uh, Azure AD or Azure Active Directory is no longer there. It's now named as Identity, which does make sense and it's a lot clearer. So here I am in the uh, Entra Admin Center. And first of all, you'll notice that things have definitely changed. So along with obviously a number of new features, you can also see that the categories have changed. So Azure Active Directory is gone and in its place, it just says identity. So we now have Entra Admin Center. You've got Entra Identity, you've got Protection, You've got Entra ID Identity Governance. You've got Entra Verifiable Credentials, Permissions Management, and we have the new Global Service Access feature, which is super cool, and I'm going to feature this in a dedicated session in the not-too-distant future. 
Now, of course, a number of people have asked, um, are there names of products that are not changing? So here is a list of things that we know where the names are actually not changing. And one interesting one is the Azure Active Directory B2C feature. So business to consumer, this will be continue uh, to be an Azure service. I wonder how long that will last actually. You know, this next feature has, oh, feels like it's been in uh, preview for ages. Uh, this is identity governance. In here, of course, you can do things like entitlement management, access packages. Um, you can also do things like life cycle workflows. Um, so if you're using HR systems, uh, you can easily onboard uh, employees with a number of uh, different templates. So there's a whole bunch of templates that you can use and you can create workflows. Um, in addition, um, you've also got things like access reviews. There's nothing worse than assigning permissions to a user. Two years down the line, you suddenly realize that you've got major permissions creep. Now, over the past few months, I've done a number of features on identity governance, including access packages, access reviews, and of course, things like um, privileged identity management and so on. So again, if you're interested in that, definitely check out the playlist. Uh, for that. Now, one of my favorite features to be announced is the Global Secure Access Preview. Um, where this is where you can take advantage of Microsoft's vast data center and networking infrastructure. Now, as such, this is going to provide two new major services. This is going to provide secure and configurable internet access for your users remotely, uh, irrespective of where they are, which will take advantage of Microsoft's vast Azure networking capabilities. In addition, you can also provide private internet access or intranet access uh, to your users for internal use. And if you think about the cost of dedicated lines, this is going to save an absolute fortune and it's a game changer. In addition, all of this will be configurable and securable in tools like conditional access. So to get started, we simply come into the Microsoft Entra Admin Center and we can see that we have this global secure access preview. So what you need to do is just activate the preview. And once you've activated the preview, you can then start to uh, onboard. So there are essentially two services here. You've got the uh, Entra Internet Access and you've also got Entra Private Access uh, for corporate customers as well. So in essence, this is kind of similar similar to a kind of a VPN type solution, except of course, uh, it's a game changer in the fact that it's going to save you a lot of money. So once you've activated the preview, it's simply a case of coming down here into devices. And if you hit the clients, there is an option here to download the client for both Windows 10 and Windows 11. There are a couple of prerequisites here. The device must be Azure AD joined. And again, you need to have the local admin password uh, uh, permissions uh, during this, the uh, setup here. Now, in addition to that, um, you can, once you've got your devices onboarded, one of the benefits, of course, certainly if it's private access, you can provide access to things like enterprise applications. Uh, you can provide internet access. Now, in terms of security as well, we also have policy profiles and filtering profiles. And of course, you've got conditional access rules here as well. And you can also manage traffic and how that traffic is forwarded. But as I say, I'm going to do a full demo uh, of this in the not too distant future with a dedicated session. So definitely watch out for that. So with these innovations in providing internet and secure internet access to our users, we need a good security solution. So for this, of course, Microsoft are extending the capabilities of conditional access and continuous access evaluation uh, to uh, enforce security policies, but not just on apps and devices, but also now on your networking configurations. 
So conditional access has always been superb at securing users who access applications and devices and so on. But now you can enforce what we call unified conditional access, which will take into account not just users, devices, apps, but also networking connections as well. So this doesn't just mean that you can secure the network connections, but you can also monitor and control uh, access to certain websites or applications. So that means that you can extend your corporate policies and security without compromising the user's overall experience. So just very briefly, I want to come in here. I'm going to come into the protection tab and I'm going to come into conditional access. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new policy. And I'm going to call this policy my Oslo CA policy one. Okay, I'm being original. Uh, I'm going to go into my users. I'm going to select some users. And in my users, I'm going to bring in uh, Oslo. <clears throat> and you can see that I've got a, a group here called Oslo Engineering. So I'm going to add that group in. And now it says, OK, uh, what resources? So what is this conditional access policy for? Now, do remember that conditional access policy is all about signals. And those signals can include what, you know, the user, what type of app they're accessing. But in this case, I'm going to click on the new, the drop down arrow here, and you can see that we have the new global secure access preview. Now, uh, at the moment, you can see I didn't actually, I've not done the subscription for the internet traffic or the private traffic, but you can see it would add additional conditional access policies here. But I can set up a policy here for the Microsoft 365 traffic. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now what we're doing is you can now create, this is the target resource. So I'm saying all Microsoft 365 traffic must meet these conditions. And again, you can specify the user risk here. So I'm going to go ahead with high and medium. I'm going to say sign in risk again, high and medium. I'm going to say um, device platforms. So check it out. You could only allow certain device platforms or devices to run through this. So I could say uh, uh, Windows, uh, Mac OS and iOS, for example. Now, we also have, of course, uh, new features in here. You can uh, configure things like any location, trusted locations. And currently in preview, we've got the all compliant network locations. So again, this is testing the network for compliance. And again, I'm going to cover this in a future session. Uh, or you can just do selected locations. So um, in this case, I'm going to say all trusted locations locations. Uh, actually, I could say exclude all trusted locations in that case, because we're talking about 365 traffic. Now, of course, the other thing is I could say, uh, what kind of traffic am I going to allow through? So I'm going to allow browser and mobile apps, and I'm going to ignore legacy authentication clients. Now, actually, um, one of the announcements recently was that conditional access will also secure these legacy authentication clients. So if you are, um, uh, for example, in a hybrid scenario with the likes of Exchange or SharePoint, and you you're using older clients, then don't worry. Uh, Microsoft have listened to you and they're going to be improving the security for that. Um, OK, so now that we've done that, uh, do remember that you can also filter for devices as well. So in this case, we're talking about accessing Internet traffic. I could include specific devices. I could say, you know, device IDs. Uh, specific ownership, so only allow corporate devices uh, to use uh, access Microsoft 365 and don't allow personal devices. You can also uh, say, you know, make sh if the device is compliant, make sure the device is compliant. So these dynamic rules are absolutely rock. So definitely check those out. So now that you've done the conditions, the signals, um, I'm going to say, yep, yeah, I want to grant uh, access, but I will require multi-factor authentication 
unless you're in a trusted location, of course. And again, there are all other options here as well. Now, again, do remember, we're talking about Microsoft um, 365 traffic. Now, the one thing I will say is I'm going through this demo quite quick, but if you've not seen or you're not familiar with conditional access, then definitely check out my identity playlist as I do cover that in great detail. So there you go, some of the changes in conditional access. Um, again, I will go through that in much more detail in a future session. So there you have it, Entra ID. What do you think? Do you think Microsoft have made a good move? Do you, made a, you, you think the, the naming has been a little bit crazy? I'd love to hear your thoughts. So uh, get those down below along with any session suggestions. I do appreciate that. Now, if you've not subscribed, bump the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and you'll be notified uh, of any new postings. And if you have any comments, uh, as I said, get those down below. That's it for today. You take care and thanks very much for tuning in. See you soon. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.